It is Farrier Day once again. Dr. Nancy's still out of the office this week. And so today we picked a bunch of horses that should hopefully not need any sort of sedation. They should all be fairly well behaved. Who is That's little Joe. He was in the last group of auction horses and he just came down from quarantine. Um, so far he's doing pretty okay. Uh, we didn't really know what to expect from him because since he's new and we haven't tried to pick up his feet before, but I put him on the list today just to see how he'd do and so far he's being okay. You're just fixing to beat the snot out of me. It's okay bud, relax. All ferocious. Whoa. They still get you pretty good if they manage to kick you. Oh yeah, definitely. You still move pretty quick, but. Right, it's done. Somehow though, it's just the scale is less intimidating. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah, just stay close enough to them where they can't. That's it. Can't get a full kick in. You usually That's it. just fine. This is Cookie. She came in, uh, I think it was two auctions ago and she's getting her first trim. Um, we held off on trimming her initially just because she was not doing really well health wise. And so we wanted to make sure that she was gonna pull through and do okay before we um, subjected her to getting her feet done, especially since we weren't sure if she was gonna need station. So um, she's done really good. She's gained weight. She's up to, I'd say at least a body score three, pushing four. And so, um, yeah, she was. she's healthy enough now. She's back to her typical sassy mini personality and um, she's getting her trim done today. <laughs> The world is not ending. I know. I guess if that's where she wants her foot. It seems I can feel her relaxing, and I'm like, I don't know if that's a good thing she's about to explode again, or if she's actually relaxing. <laughs> the calm before the storm. Okay, all right, so there's that. Look, friend. It's okay, Cookie. This is uh, Romeo. He came as an owner surrender like a month or two ago. All of my hard work. He's a bit tore up, but uh, should be okay. A little bit of white line disease on the front. So you might have a few little pockets back here, but not, not anything super major. So he's all right, just needs some regular maintenance. Uh, white line disease is a fungal bacterial infection of the white line region and uh, and the insensitive lamina. Uh, it gets in there and it breaks down the tissue, uh, kind of turns it into a, a black cheesy mess and then it falls out and then you get a kind of a cavity, a crater. And if you don't stop it, it'll keep on working its way all the way up the hoof um, and can cause further issues because things that are supposed to be attached are no longer attached. Um, so it's anaerobic, so oftentimes what we do to try to get rid of it is we cut a section of the hoof hole out uh, as far up as the white line disease goes. And that allows oxygen uh, to get to it, and that will usually kill it, and then it's just a matter of them uh, growing the hoof wall back down. So that's what we did on our front, and uh, we'll keep an eye on it, but it should be good to go because it's not that serious of a case. All right, he's done. Those back ones were pretty good. Looked. Did yeah. he have separation back there at all? Uh, a little bit on the, little bit on the inside heel quarter, but not, not really enough to worry about. He's just, it's really just more war short. He kind of wallowed out his quarter more than anything else. Great, perfect. We uh, just finished working on Romeo over there, and he did really well. He's one of the best behaved donkeys I've ever worked on. So it was a pleasure. This is Benjamin. He's um, been in the vet barn for a couple months now since um, he uh, came in auction, I think two months ago. He came really, really sick 
We didn't really know what was going on, but after a little while, Dr. Nancy was able to figure out that he had an abscess in his neck. So she opened that up to drain it. It's getting really close to being ready to fill in all the way now, but, but yeah, he needed his feet done. So he's getting his feet done today. Yeah, when he first had the wound, um, he was like super lethargic and we had like stick the hose in there, rinse it out, and he wouldn't even budge. Like really? he would just stand there. It doesn't smell awesome. No, no, it doesn't. And I've gotten used to the smell so far, but he also hasn't had his daily treatment yet. Let's try not to smear that stuff over the You hate yourself, fair, mister. Yeah, right, just avoid like touching that part. Yeah, my wife wouldn't let me back in the house. Behave yourself. Don't be a donkey. <laughs> Don't be a donkey. All right, he's done. Look at that. Look at your cute little footsies. Nice little, nice little parting shot. And don't come back. Look at your cute little footsies. Oh, so cute. Just wrapped up for the morning here. We got uh, eight trims done. Everything went smoothly, no broken fingers. So, successful morning. We have a surrender here. A lady called last week and wanted to surrender the horse. She said it was acting aggressive towards her. And uh, she did say it has a pretty severe founder. She had it tied up to a tree since Friday. It's a pretty sad case. Uh, kind of makes me mad just thinking about it, but she's here now. So we're gonna figure out what is best for her, especially with that severe founder. We might get x-rays done on there and go from there. I'm doing pretty good. Oh, that's good. I'm not, Your girls I'm not. Are doing amazing. Yeah, we stay on the road. Yeah. I haul kids. Yeah, yeah. So I got a call yesterday evening. Hey, Jason. How's it going, Gary? And uh, told her I would come get the horse and it'd be late, so I went and got it. But it was tied to a tree. So I got it home and watered it and it drank two five gallon buckets of water. So. Fed it a little triple crown and gave it some hay and this morning it drunk two more five gallon buckets of water. Foundered really bad. So, you know, we'll see. Well, this year I think we have we have bought about half the stock out of Sundrop. So we've really upped it on the Sundrop. And I actually the one store I was buying the Sundrop slushies from, they quit selling them, but I actually found another one the other day. So God answers prayers. That's you important. know? I mean for those that don't know, when Garrick was our primary farrier, he would come out with coolers full of sundrop. Because this guy doesn't have blood in his veins, he's got diluted sundrop. I've actually got some in the cooler now. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of, it'd be a good time to have one. You wanna see his horse going? Yeah, let's check it out. All right, let's go check it out. Pretty severe founder, but it's not aggressive like the lady said. Wow. Imagine right. that. Yeah. Now, aggressive to another horse maybe, but not. Oh, she said it ran her over, tried to kick her. I just led the horse on the trailer, walked it in the stall, rolled it back on the trailer. But now this lady's on a walker. Is she? she? She's using a walker to get around, so I don't know what she calls aggressive. I don't know how long she's had it tied to the tree. She tied it up Friday. So it's been there since Friday. Well, there wasn't no water there. That's ridiculous. Huh. I mean, I'm not seeing anything aggressive about this horse. Yeah, I don't know what. This sucker's not, it's not in good enough shape to be very aggressive. No. It's got sores on the back of its <laughs> legs too on the back here on this back right. Probably where that rope got tied up to that lead rope. It was on like an eight, nine foot rope. Just walking around, huh? Tied to a big tree. Oh, poor guy. The horse was literally tied to an oak tree about this big around and there was a big old propane tank right beside it and she's on eight, nine foot of rope, which is probably why her back legs are burned up. The sores probably come from getting twisted up in the rope. That usually happens. 
And I told her, I was like, I can't come get it. I've got hay down, we're busy, you know. Oh, well, let's stay in tight of this tree. I said, well, if I come, it'll be late tonight, if that'll work. That's fine, come get it, it ain't going nowhere. But it says she's seven. It's anywhere between seven and 10, yeah. Actually, maybe a little younger. She doesn't have the hooks yet. To be that young, that horse shouldn't look like that. No. She said she had a guy come out and shoe the horse. That horse had shoes? And <laughs> he, he specialized in shoeing foundered horses. I don't believe that because anybody that shoot horses very long with that right there, I don't, I don't see that. I, does I've, that I, horse look like it's had shoes? I, I don't, uh, even if you did, they're not gonna stay on. The soles grown out so much, or it's, it's, that horse needs a lot of work done. But, and it's a tender, you see it rocking back and forth. Oh, yeah. okay. I'm still shoeing a little bit, but not like I was. Yeah. I'm not doing a bunch like I used to. I'm building a lot of fences and doing a lot of hay. We're bailing a lot of hay this year. All right, well, I gotta go. I got daddy cutting. Good to see you guys again. I'll be back. Forever since I've been here, I think I've been gone for like a whole month, it feels like. Uh, but while we were away, um, I really want to just thank everyone for stepping up to, to work hard while we were gone. And I was also working from the road and I decided to open up to our supporters about how this year has been as far as the deficit in donations. Like we're a 30% deficit from the same time last year. And, you know, I mean, we've had to lay off, you know, some people because of, of the deficit. You know, I didn't want to, to see the path of what was happening continue. And um, I did send out an email and our, our supporters stepped up so much. I explained how Big Red was just dead and how that was really affecting everything along with the deficit. Like, how was I going to make everything work? And our supporters pulled through more than we could ever imagine. And so from the time I sent out that post, we were at a 30% deficit in donations. Now we're at an 18% deficit. Wow. And that's, that's huge, amazing supporters. But part of what they were donating for was a new truck to replace Big Red. And Jason's gonna be here shortly with the new truck. Wow. Yes, yes, so super excited. So he's going to be driving in. Uh, he'll be driving in here shortly. So I think he's almost here. I can't see anything. <laughs> something coming over the hill. Nice. nice. That is not a farm truck. Whoa, that's a nice truck. Wow. I'll trade you. It is nice. I'll trade. I'll trade. <laughs> well, this is it. Yeah. Nice. German. So it's a 2022, has tw less than 22,000 miles on it. And it's not a Duramax, it's a, it's a gas because we often don't um, need the diesel. We only tow heavy once a month. Otherwise we're like running to town to get supplies or running over to the quarantine pasture, so. Gas is cheaper and- more reliable. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, a little more reliable. And we're not hauling horses over the Sierra Mountains. Tennessee's relatively flat or rolling, so. Yep. And it has a gooseneck hitch, so we can use it today. We're thinking high ho silver, because it was a wonderful horse 
and this has got a lot of horsepower that can haul a lot of horses to safety. So, hi-ho silver. Well, let's go hook it up to a gooseneck, see what it looks like. A little more. Yep. I had a truck one time that had a camera up there you could actually see when you're uh, <laughs> hooked up, but this one does not. There we go. Yay. One thing I like about Chevy's is they actually make it where you can push a button and it'll cycle through your trailer lights so you make sure your wiring's working. So right now it's cycling through the different ones. Right there's brake lights and then left blinker, right blinker, backup lights. That's pretty cool. I mean, that's a pretty cool feature. You can make sure all your wires are working. It makes it super easy to uh, troubleshoot if something isn't working. But it's all hooked up and we're ready to roll to the auction in a few hours. <laughs> Still see you. Dang. Sorry. Can't escape the camera. You can't escape the camera here. You can try as much as you want, but if you're going to be working here, there is going to be a camera in your face. I'd say at least 10 to 20 times a week. So if you don't like cameras, maybe don't work here, but um, if they even had a close up, I was behind the camera and I've been trying to convince these guys I can be a part of a media team, but I don't think anyone's biting yet. This is like your fifth time mentioning that. Movie. I know, I'm gonna keep mentioning and I it. I don't think you're gonna be part I'm of the I'm gonna media keep team. mentioning it until I make it up there. Okay. Like, I wanna be a part of the big leagues one day, you know? Good luck with that. The media team, they're pretty elite people. I don't know if you know that but they're some of the best of the best. We're pretty awesome. You guys are pretty awesome. <laughs> well, Corey, how many horses are we going to get? Uh, I'm going to say 18. 18? Yep, final answer, and that's what it's going to be. I'm just looking to see if anything in the auction box needs to be restocked. Everything looks like it hasn't probably been touched since last time. So, yeah, it looks pretty good to me. Um, everything is basically ready. Are you sure? Yeah. Are you really, really sure? Oh yeah, unless so you... I'm taking them to the best office and be the squeaker eyes. But, but I'm telling you, do you, are you sure 100% that there's not a chicken in this office? How did he get in my office? Uh, see, I'm telling you, these chickens have he a- He can stay because he's quiet. Well, uh, like I said, these chickens have a mind on their own. And he's being well behaved. Well, yeah. <laughs> this is supposed to be the peaceful office. <laughs> Clearly it's not. You're right no. next to the media room, so. Right. <laughs> Got a chicken there. Got another chicken there. And I'm a chicken too. Mm-hmm. I, I'm, I'm more of a developed chicken, but yeah. I'm a, I'm a sulky. Because as you can see my hair, it's crazy. Hey. Isabella, how many horses do you think we'll get from auction? Um, hmm. I'm gonna say 23, because that's the first number that came to mind. Okay. <laughs> Very nice. Okay. Jason, do I you like have that number. number. 23 is really cool, but it's not 23 and me, it's 23 <laughs> and D. So. 23 horses sounds good, but I'm gonna go one lower because it's gonna be 22, so I'm gonna be closer. Okay. Because we're actually gonna get 19. And two donkeys, so 21. Uh. <laughs> and I'm bidding, so I get to decide. But I'm gonna save as many as I can, so maybe it'll be 30, 40, who knows? I'm not gonna make it complicated like Jason. It's yeah, gonna be very saying. simple. Very, very simple. You just basically multiply three times five. <laughs> Why are men like this? <laughs> just answer the question. It's just simple to just say 20 horses, okay? It's too simple. It needs to be just a tiny bit more, you know? It, it, it makes it feel like there's more in there. Men, that's all I have to say. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> okay, Don, how many do you think we'll get from auction? Same answer I've had all the time, 50. 
50? We have to beat the 53 mark we've had before. How many horses do you think we'll get today? Okay, so I was thinking 20 yesterday. That's what I was thinking. But then I slept on it and I've come to the conclusion that we are going to get 18 today. 18? Yes, that is my guess. It's not too bad. And I hope that I'm pleasantly surprised. Where's the most fun we can have the rescue? Loading pigs is not fun. Yeah, that's not gonna work. <laughs> Just gonna go this way. You could follow me. <laughs> Outlaw Rescue and Rehab has decided to take the female pig that's over here. Um, this pig was surrendered to us. Some people sold their house to this couple and the couple soon realized that there were some animals that came with the purchase. There was a couple pigs running around on their property. It was this one here and also a male. So I believe it's a safe assumption to assume that they are, or she is pregnant, but Outlaw Rescue and Rehab, they have pigs out there already. So they decided that they would take the female. They didn't want to take the male just because they were concerned that it may want to fight with the other pigs that they already have. So we did get this one rehome, but we're still waiting to find a home for the male. Like corral the pig, because with horses, you can just wave your arms, and they care about that. Pigs don't care about anything. Yeah, uh, the last time that we tried to get a pig on a trailer or off a trailer, we like used a feed bag, but then the pig like, stepped through the feed bag and broke the feed bag, so that's not a good idea. Uh, but maybe you could put something over the top of the feed bag, like prop it up with feed bags and then put something. <laughs> Wife. He's talking to his lady. <laughs> It'd be like asking a person to try to do this. <laughs> like lift their leg up over an edge like that. <laughs> She'll have to be all hoisted. Well, Keith just got here, so. I know. She just sat down. There we go. Nice. It went really good. Um, I felt bad because Keith had to use all his muscles, and there was only so much I could do. You still did a good. Job. You did a good. Job. They have a ramp on their trailer. They have a ramp. Oh, they do? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, perfect. perfect. We got her loaded. That's all I got to say. Cool. So Corey goes, hey, grab the board. And I'll say, uh uh. Pig's getting on the trailer now. So I'm starting. And she went up. Don't question me. I know what I'm doing. on the new truck's maiden voyage. Uh, again, so incredibly thankful for our supporters that step forward to help us uh, get the truck and raise us up from the deficit that we've had uh, this year in donations. But really, really excited. Um, I think it looks great with the horse trailer. 
and uh, time time to hit the road. Corey's, Corey's just in front of us, so we want a caravan, so we'll see you at the auction. <laughs> tonight went really well. I guessed 18 and I was right. Um, we got some good ones tonight, ones that need us, and I'm ready to see them all get their new lease on life. And for the ones that are hurting, I'll be glad when they're not hurting anymore. I did bring Butte, so the ones that are hurting, uh, we'll give them pain management so they'll stay comfortable tonight. And then um, in the morning, we'll see how they're doing. Right now, I'm just trying to count um, all the horses in this pen. We did rescue 18 horses tonight. Uh, Jason's in the sale office right now, getting everything in there taken care of. Sometimes we do end up having more after the sale is actually over because people go up to Jason and say, hey, we want to sell this horse to you. So right now the number is 18 and that might change. So this little flea bitten mare right here, um, she came through last auction and um, was a no sale. We tried to get her last time, um, but he, she just wanted too much for her. So we were actually able to save her today, and we are very excited. Um, she has a lot of potential. First plan of action is to find the stud that was down. We're gonna give him actual butte that's in the auction box that's out there. So we're gonna go out and grab that. Everybody else that uh, looks like they're in pain, um, like lameness issues that we see, we can give them buteless. You okay, bud? Hi. You've been saved, my friend. We'll make it stop hurting, okay, buddy? They walked you a really long way for someone that has boo-boos. Yeah. I'm so sorry. I know you hurt. We'll let them know where you are, okay? So we just gave him uh, some pain management just to try to help make him a little bit more comfortable for the night. Um, we do have a separate trailer coming in the morning to pick him up so he doesn't have to ride with anybody else because he's not gonna be able to ride just standing with a bunch of horses. He's gonna end up going down, someone's gonna step on him and it's gonna be worse. So he has pain management on board and he will be comfortable for the night, we hope but we've done everything we can for him now. He's gonna stay here. We're gonna make sure he has water. He's got some shavings laid down on so he's not laying in the mud. You can go down, buddy, it's okay. Atta kid. One of the horses we rescued tonight, when it came into the ring, it was obviously, it could barely walk. And it was laying down before the auction, it's laying down after the auction. And who knows what they had to do to get it up to walk into the ring but the auctioneer said that it actually blew its front legs out from having too heavy of stacks put on it in training for the big lick show and he actually said that's common i hadn't seen that before but it's just really sad that they push these horses to where their body's breaking just for an artificial gait and it's just it's got to stop Oh, we're looking at this little, I think it's a mare right here. She's got a swollen shoulder. Um, her and her teammate were, from what they said through the auction, Amish horses that got in a wreck. So this one has a swollen uh, elbow there, and then the other one, the whole back leg is swollen. So poor babies. A lot of these, if they got treated right away, then probably have a better chance, but unfortunately people don't treat them as living things. Bucket challenge tonight. I can't find a good bucket. <laughs> so I was kind of right with my guess. It was uh, 18 plus one. 
that we rescued, was it? Well, it was 19, and then we're getting all the horses settled, and the auctioneer's like, do you want to buy another one? So, oh. 20. Okay, so plus two from what I was originally saying. Yeah, you know, that's a good thing. What's not a great thing is Dr. Nancy's not here, and we kind of got really used to her being here and just having all of our medical expertise and just like do this, do this, and we're like, uh, what do we do now? So anyway, Corey, Corey manned up, he got it done. We uh, got everybody settled, they've all got their water, they got pain management on the ones that needed it that we could get, you know, not all of them were friendly, so. Yeah. Uh, tried getting pain management on a mule that had a previous broken leg and that we're suspecting and that was said through the ring. And it tried to kick me, so I was like, all right, you can sit for the night and we'll try again tomorrow. But other than that, we are done. Everyone has water. They're situated. And he's been living that way for years. So for him, it's like, it's just going to be another night of pain. It's it's not going to affect his life a whole lot. It's not worth risking Corey's well-being to give him pain management. So yeah, And it's not my job to train at the auction. I'm just, I'm here to help get everything situated, get horses need go where they need to go. And, and it would be more traumatizing probably for him to try to train him to force pain management on him than to let him be how he's been for five or six years. Yeah, absolutely. But 20 horses saved and we're super happy. And tired. It's after midnight. <laughs> we're Roxy and William with Outlaw Equine Rescue and Rehab in Crossville, Tennessee. And we were out here at the auction tonight. Um, there were supposed to be 50 something equines running through and we fell in love with a little yearling Mule, yeah, he was about a yearling. Yeah. Kind of gotten partial to long ears after we had Turo transferred to our facility. So I think he's going to be a good fit to our uh, long ear, long -ear uh, uh, population yeah. of equine in our uh, rescues. So, so that's going to be kind of We cool. were able to get a transfer from Horse Plus, which we're always so grateful for. The work that they do here at the auction, but as well as being able to transfer to our facility. And I think that, uh, you know, all these horses that were picked up by Horse Plus tonight. We're they're in the right hands now. They're going to be taken care of. They're going to be cared for and loved, and uh, that makes me happy at least. So it's a good night. With um, the shavings piled up like they are, one time we were here and a slaughter truck stopped by on its route to Mexico full of horses and it unloaded them all and there was a downed horse in there and um, we ended up trying to help get him off the trailer just because they were using cattle prods and shocking him and it was terrible but we had them back the slaughter truck up to the sawdust pile and we literally had to pull him out and every time I see the sawdust piles uh, like this it just reminds me of that um, horrific situation and he died in my arms it was like oh there's so many victims in the slaughter pipeline You gonna get it? You have this big, strong fiance standing I, see, right here. See, I was here. going to do it, and she said, "I'm Fine. gonna do it." Come and on, she Corey. Asked me to do it. Oh, well, you're very resourceful, Kate. Last time I carried a lot. Dr. Nancy is on continuing education, so uh, we don't have her with us, but I think we can get it done. And I've been talking with her, so uh, and she'll be available uh, for us. So. Uh, a little bit different. We have a very small skeleton crew here, but uh, we can make we can make it happen. The plan is we're going to be getting photos of the horses, getting them ready to be transported. Keith just showed up with the other trailers, so we're going to have him to help us. Uh, we're getting ready to get a lot done. Welcome, Keith. Good morning. It's been a while since you've been at Auction Rescue. It's been a little while, yeah. I'm taking a break. Well, <laughs> we'll put you to work today. There we go. And here he is. Oh, 
my baby. His tail tendon has been cut. Has it? Because they, they shouldn't go back like that. And this could be from a harness, a tail harness, all this rubbing. This is a thrown away big lick horse from everything we can understand. We went through the Ooh, auction. Easy, buddy. It's all right, buddy. Um, they said that he had really big pads on and training and basically busted out his tendons. Um, Dr. Nancy's not with us today, but we are gonna get him to a veterinarian to figure out what's going on with him as fast as we can. So it doesn't look like he's ancient to me, but Dr. Nancy can figure it out. So we're gonna try to get him up, get him to a veterinarian, but he's in rough shape. We'll give him some more stuff for pain, and then if you can back up the trailer, put lots of bedding in there, and we'll, and then just take him straight to the vet, and we'll see um, what they say for him. But it's not looking good. I'll go prep the trailer. So from a distance, I can usually tell when their tail has been cut, and I saw it in the videos last night. They just hold it at a, at a different angle because their tendons have been cut that would hold a horse in a normal angle. Big lick horses are manipulated in so many ways that it's just horrendous. Um, and they like to be like, oh, we don't, we don't soar horses, we don't abuse them. I'm at auction and I see this all the time, and it's gotta stop. The misery that, that I see in big lick horses is beyond imaginable. Hey buddy, it's gonna help you out, okay? I've got everything open and ready. You can see that he's worn a, a saddle that has not been fitted properly, um, and it's worn through his hair. And this is old, that's because the, the white hair's there, so he's, uh, he was ridden a lot with a saddle that wasn't the right fitting saddle for him, but I don't think big lick people care. I've seen some, I've seen their sides raw from the girths and where they've spurred them and they're bleeding. It's just terrible. And this is where they end up. We're just gonna give them some cookies and then uh, we'll load them up. making horses like this get up. But, oh, buddy. Poor guy. Good boy, I'm sorry, baby. You can see how he's holding his tail, uh, too. That's a sign that his tail tendon was cut. And we're just gonna load him right onto the trailer and he can, he can lay back down. We got it really bedded down thick. We're gonna get him going straight to the vet. Good boy. All right, well, you can head just straight to the vet. And I saw his leg was buckled over and right after he stopped bleeding them, he just laid right down. I wonder if we just gave him a little bit of time in the trailer. He might lay down so it's not on the road and trying to lay down. Got him loaded up. Uh, Keith is gonna head to the vet and get him checked out and um, we do the best we can for him. Cases like this are heartbreaking. And we can't really get veterinarians here. Like I've, I've had horses um, down here before trying to get a veterinarian out here. It's literally impossible. There's a huge shortage of large animal veterinarians. And our veterinarian is at continuing education, but we did not want to come to the auction. And if we hadn't have come, this horse wouldn't be getting the help he's getting now. So we're going to trailer him to a veterinarian um, as fast as we can. Driving safely, of course, no, no, no speeding. No speeding, just nice and safely, and yes. we'll get him going. All right, well, thanks for coming over to, to bring the second trailer so he could ride by himself and get him to the vet.
You're giving them all sin chill. And handle. if they can, um, if there's any signs of, of soreness, we give them the butte list. Macy, you've got the, the running list down of what I'm gonna tell you. All right. We're gonna put them in groups of five, and as long as they're good, that's the group that they will travel with back to the shelter. It's, it's pretty messed up. It could, there could be some really bad dental issues going on. That could be one reason is he's so skinny. But again, we don't have Dr. Nancy with us. She is actually at an equine dentist uh, course. So she's getting very educated on equine dentistry, which is huge because that's, we need that. We see so many horses with crazy teeth and a lot has changed from when she graduated uh, veterinarian school um, you know, like 20 years ago. There's so much has changed in equine dentistry in that time. Super excited when she comes back and she can really know as, as like the top of the line education on equine teeth. So that's gonna help out a lot of horses we rescue. Poor, poor baby. Hello, Margaret, over in Savannah. Hey, baby. It's like another t cut tendon. So probably a big lick, ex big lick horse. It looks more like a saddle bread. We had a horse like, like this at the same auction, couldn't put any weight on one leg, and she ended up just having an abscess and we were able to fix it. So we don't know um, what, what's going on, but something that looks really bad like this could just be an abscess. Um, the issue I'm seeing here is she's got a lot of swelling right here, so, and it's hard. So we're gonna need to x-ray her shoulder. He's got some scarring. Possibly from a fence injury. There's some on his front leg. So they said when he ran through the ring that he ran into a barbed wire fence, and that's what happened to his face. He's got a uh, yeah, messed that, up face. That ain't from barbed wire fence. No, I know, but I'm just saying what That's they said. what they said. Do you want beat list on him? Okay, come see this horse's. All right, Tani says, come look at this horse's When you teeth. see a skinny horse, like a lot of people are like, oh, my horse is old, that's why he's skinny. An old horse, if it's skinny, there's something wrong. There may be internal organs that are wrong. It could be teeth. Uh-oh, he's missing teeth. Ah, oh, poor horse. We're gonna x-ray the front left. Something's weird there. I think this is the one, it looked like there was possibly an abscess that blew out the side of one of the hoofs last night. There was just a hole, but it's all covered with mud and stuff weird, right now, so Weird we looking. Yeah. I know, you're, you like your friend. A little bit buddy sour, this one. <laughs> oh. I know, you made a friend, huh? We'll have to get the drafts in because she, um, the other horses, so. she's got an enlarged udder and also oozing diarrhea and cloudy eyes. But if I can get this halter on, it'd be great because I didn't get him caught last night, so we didn't actually, we weren't able to give him any butte lists or any pain management. So even if I can't get the halter on, I could just get up to him and give him the butte lists and maybe some sensual, I'd be happy. And Corey now has a halter on the mule. So look at that. Good job, Corey. Thanks. Wow. It's still really unsure of people, but I was able to get the halter on. I was able to give it some pain management and I was able to give it some chill. So hopefully that'll help him a little bit for the ride back to the shelter. Um, unfortunately with stuff like this, there's not really much that we can do, but we're really not gonna know what's going on with that leg until we get x-rays and send those to Dr. Nancy so she can kind of tell us what's going on with this animal. 
rear end pitcher, if possible. He's a, a male. He does kick. Okay. Just so you know. So this mule did kick at Corey you last night. He just turned night. his head that direction and, uh, a little bit more. So we're going to be extra careful with him. Watch out. So, Tawny is jumping over panels because the mule decided to... Uh, but I can get a great back picture. The mule didn't kick at Tawny, but it was swinging around like it was getting ready to think about it, so Tawny climbed over the panel real quick. Good? Yep. He has a docked tail, so half of his tailbone was cut off, basically. And they do that for um, ease of putting the harness on him. Ah, uh, so this is the blind one. So they said they had a pair. They tried to breed both of them. She didn't take, the other one did, so they brought her. So they tried to breed this horse and she didn't take, so they brought her here to the auction. So this is the blind Belgian and she was really, really scared, but I was able to get my hands on her and she's relaxed so much that I was able to touch her face. And over here they have this heavy uh, leather halter on her but it's actually eaten into her face. And that's all just raw nastiness and flies are attracted to it. So I'm gonna take this leather halter off and put a rope halter on that will be below where it's just caused so much irritation into her face. So the problem is with rope halters or with the uh, leather halters, they are very stiff and sometimes impossible to to bend to get off, so this might be literally stuck on her. Um, and we might have to, easy girl. I'm gonna see if I can lift it up and over. Easy girl, easy, good girl, good girl, good girl. Okay, good girl. Good girl. She's really letting me do just about anything I want to now that she trusts me. Good girl. You're trying so hard. Good cool, baby. Mm. Mm, just a big mm. So this is the halter that she was wearing. And you can see where it's all raw and oozy. This was and yucky. That's where it was on her nose. And then up here on the top by her ears, it's all ooey yucky and there's pus so that this halter was just like eating into her and we're gonna make sure we take this halter because we don't want to leave it here and have somebody put it on their horse and have the same problems happen because draft horses halters are hard to get and leather ones are expensive but when they're eating into your animal's face it's a bad halter We've given the horses a little bit of time to settle down and they're all doing good in their different compartments that we've put them into. So we're gonna start loading them up and get them to the shelter. Um, auction rescues are always complicated and you may watch our episodes and be like, oh, that was so fast, but it took hours to get to the point where we could load them and we felt comfortable loading them in the different groups together. So um, everyone seems like they're doing good and I haven't gotten any update on the horse that we sent to the veterinarian. Um, you know, he's in such bad condition, but I'm really thankful that we were able to have Keith drive over here with the other trailer and bed it down real good so he could lay down and rest while he was taken to the vet. So I'm sure I'll get an update on him en route, but as of this point, I don't know what's happening. But I've got to focus on getting these horses loaded up and into the trailer and getting them back to safety. Go on, buddy. You are handsome as handsome can be. Such a cutie patootie. He's a super sweet stud. So we got them loaded up. The mule is leg is an old injury and when, if it was fresh, we would not be moving a mule that had a broken leg, but when it, the bone is all healed and fused, it's going to be like a nagging, uncomfortable pain, but it's not like 
like it, it just injured itself and its owner should have put it down a long time ago. But when it's been a long going chronic injury, a lot of the nerves and stuff could be dead in that area. So we've got the next group coming up. When you're towing a long trailer, you really want to have somebody in the back to um, tell you when to stop. Oh my, that is diarrhea. Look, that is, that is rough diarrhea right there. Stay there, baby. Come on, load up. Okay, yeah, no, I, I understand. I really appreciate you uh, examining it, and um, yeah, no, I, I, I think that that is the best decision. All right, thank you. So, the first time I talked with the veterinarians about the, the stallion that was down, it was looking a little more favor favorable, but I did ask them to examine his testicles because he had a really enlarged testicle, and when they ultrasounded, him it ended up being intestines in the scrotum area and so basically intestines were coming down through traveling down and, and ending up right next to the testicle with that complication and his his front uh, leg complication the kindest thing was to give him the last act of kindness so sometimes rescuing a horse is simply being there to get it the help it needs and giving it the last act of kindness so I'm glad that we were able to get him to a veterinarian as soon as we could and and that he isn't going to be suffering anymore. All right, so we're all wrapped up here at the auction. We are done with our assessment. We have everybody loaded up onto the trailers. We have a few that we need to get x-rays on when we get back so we can send to Dr. Nancy to figure out what we're going to be doing with them from there, what the best option is for each horse. So we're going to get ready to hit the road and we'll see you all back at the shelter. Well, we are a very small crew here today. Um, it's me and Kimberly and John and uh, Isabella oh. <laughs> and Faye and Christy. Uh, Dawn's coming in late. Keith left at 4.45 this morning to go down to the auction to help with the transport. We have a very sick horse. So he left out super early this morning and um, we're still gonna get it done somehow here and get ready and everything will be ready when they get back but Kimberly and I are gonna be very busy. Normally we would have more help than this but we don't so it's just me and Angela. So we're about to go up to quarantine to kind of clean the barn up there and get everything ready um, for intake this afternoon. Whoever donated these. We've already told you before, but you're amazing. So, brought these up for quarantine intake. It's really hot outside. I'm gonna drop them in here with this ice cold water and ice. And then, when everybody gets here, they're gonna be so happy. Because isn't it nice to have something really cool on a hot day? We got everything set up. It's all ready for our intake, and they're almost here. Got back to the shelter. Uh, Hi Ho Silver did great. Our new rescue rig. I uh, just got to get the horses unloaded and uh, start the intake process.
got the horses all unloaded and now it's time to do intake. Dr. Nancy is not here. Uh, she's on continuing education, but um, she is available by phone and uh, we're going to be sending her some pictures of x-rays and, and whatnot. So um, hopefully uh, we do miss her, but she'll be back here shortly and be able to look at all the horses. So that's good. Uh, this horse is really skinny. Uh, it does appear to have something wrong with its front right foot, but we're really not going to know anymore until we get x-rays and send them off to Dr. Nancy so she can kind of see what's going on there. We kind of see by the way he's holding it up and when he walks, something just isn't right there. This horse uh, has something wrong with its shoulder and Dr. Nancy wants us to take x-rays, so we're going to be taking x-rays and sending her the x-rays. Um, but yeah, this horse is pretty rough. I do think this is a pretty old injury because she's not super sensitive. Um, like if this had, if this was fresh, she wouldn't be letting us hold her leg up like this. And try to hold it out a little bit. I think it will. Yeah, good girl. Bone comes up and there's a nice little round bump on there and there's, it's basically just like shattered glass on the other side. It's not good. So um, this is the area that we x-rayed right here and you can kind of see how like there's a bone that comes off and back a little bit. And normally you can feel that on your horse and when they walk it will pop out. And here it's just all smashed up. So that's not good at all, and um, she's probably been that way for a while. What would have caused something like that? Who knows? I'm gonna send it to Dr. Nancy and see what uh, her thoughts are. Unfortunately, there's nothing that we're able to do for her, and um, we are gonna give her the last act of kindness. Um, Dr. Nancy is away, but you know we're communicating with her, and a number of us on site are certified euthanasia technicians through the state. I will be uh, with her and by her side as I say goodbye to her. It's, it's never anything anyone wants to do, but when there's suffering and, and you need to relieve that suffering, it's prolonging suffering, it's not okay. So when they brought this meal through the auction ring, um, they said that this is what happens if your horse or your meal breaks its leg and you don't shoot it and it heals. Uh, they said it probably broke its leg about four or five years ago and that's just how it healed. And they said he can get around just fine. He said, if you don't believe me, take him out to your pasture and you'll see how well he can move away from you. He should have been euthanized right when it happened. If a horse breaks its leg, there's not really much that can be done. The best option for it would, first of all, get your vet's opinion and then go from there and make the best decision for the animal, which in most cases would be euthanasia for something like this. Usually mules are very, very reactive to the slightest touch. And because he's had so much pain and suffering on the side of his body, I think a little pin pinprick just isn't even, he's not even gonna react to it because he's gone through so much pain. Kind of like if your foot was getting sawed off constantly and then uh, somebody came up and like kind of pinched you, you'd be like still worried about your foot. I think that's kind of what's happening here. <clears throat> Just shattered. Broken glass. The mule uh, that we got from the auction Dr. Nancy's seen it and there's, we know there's nothing we can do for this mule. The mule has shown a lot of aggressive behavior, probably out of pain. So the kindest thing we'll be able to do for this mule is to give him the last act of kindness. We do want to document the neglect that he endured. There's just, there's no way with that extensive of an injury, even though it's old, that we can allow him to continue. Uh, it, it is cruel and it's, it's suffering. Who gets to say it's too soon to be falling for you?
Um, this is a little free bitten uh, gray Pony Mary that we got. She doesn't have a name yet, so by the time you guys see this, she will have a name. She seems pretty fearful with some things, but once I got my hands on her at the auction, she actually did pretty good. Yes. Um, we'll see how she does with getting poked. Nope, you gotta do it. <laughs> so she don't like being poked, I don't blame her. She's quite jumpy. You're okay. Thanks, Corey. Um, she's getting her full intake, so what that means today is that she gets a microchip, she gets a five-way, and our orals, which is probios, um, electrolytes, and dewormer. Chew it. Not that bad. Chew it. Not bad, not bad. She keeps it all under Ah, that was enough to make you do something. Um, that was um, 8.43, she doesn't have a name yet. Um, she is, she got all of her orals and um, her five-way, which is the only vaccine that we can give today um, without Dr. Nancy here. And she also got her microchip. And so whenever Dr. Nancy gets back, we'll be able to pull her Coggins, do her rabies, um, and anything else she might need. And start a life somewhere else. This is SWAT and it helps keep flies away. And so we're just gonna cover that to keep it. And when it's uh, an old wound like that, we can't stitch it or anything like that. Like if you took him to a vet and they'd be like, uh, yeah, no, we're just gonna be treating it. But that will keep the flies from bothering him. True love. Don't wait for any man. Oh, it's a strange smell. Easy, baby. Easy. Yeah. So she is blind, and we don't want to put her through the chutes or have her get get scared. Um, so we're just going to do her her intake and her oils and all that stuff right here, so we can keep the least amount of stress for her as possible. And her friends right here, she can hear her friend. Um, we are going to need some on the very top of her head, like okay. up here. She had a halter on that was really tight and it's just raw and oozy. Good girl. Good girl. I know. You got owies. Oh, yeah. I'm going to go under you. Easy girl. Good girl. Go. He's not going to hurt you. I just yeah. cringe yeah. thinking we have Good. to poke needles in her. She's, she's like, I trust you. Put your hand like right here and just let her feel your your connection. Like that way she can feel you're, you're a nice person. So with a, a really scared horse, if you come up and you're really tense, they'll feed off of that. They'll be like, what's wrong? Something scary. Like they can hear our heart beating from like three, I think three feet away, six feet away. And so if we come up and we're scared, they get scared. So like if, if I come up and I just put my hand on her and she feels like I'm not slapping her and we're nice, then she's, she calms down. Hey, sweetheart. Corey's got some yum yums for you. We'll end, we'll end with the best one last, okay? Yummy. Good girl, good girl. And you get to stick it, stick it big old lips you got. And so again, the story with her is uh, they uh, were just using her for breeding and she didn't take and so she got dumped in the slaughter pipeline because she couldn't make more babies. Easy baby. She's like, I don't like what y'all are doing. So Corey, if you want to hold her, I will poke her. Easy Easy, baby. sweetheart. Here you go. And I also have the microchip. Hey, you gonna make it? Good girl. Good, 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 good girl. So it messes with their brain just a little bit if you aggressively pat them. Oh, man. Okay. So it's not hurting them, but when you jab the needle in, it doesn't, it doesn't freak them out so much. There you go. Miniature horses, you have to watch it. They can go through the neck. And you even give it, even giving them a shot, it can go through there. I could do many things, but I think if you jabbed a needle through a mini snack, I probably would throw up. <laughs> and I can handle many, many you things. You just don't want to be giving, holding the 
one side of the neck and putting it through a little skinny miniature. You have to be careful when you're giving vaccines to skinny miniature horses. The can just, they're, they're very, very thin. If we only just met True love, don't wait for any man So great to see them get turned out. They are so happy out there. They're just, they're just exploring. A couple of them are like, we're just gonna eat grass, but uh, you know, they've been through a lot and I think it's really nice for them just to decompress out here and be horses and they've been through a lot. We do a 30 day quarantine, they're monitored by our vet and all that good stuff. So yeah, they're gonna be happy. And then we'll also be giving them uh, supplements as soon as they're ready for it. Yeah, they're happy out there. Uh, it went pretty well. We went like, I'd say pretty fast for as many horses as we had. Um, everything went smoothly. We had a good team, a small team, but a good team. We worked efficiently there were two that we had to give the last act of kindness to today um, that they needed it right away. Um, the others are gonna kind of hang out, wait for Dr. Nancy to reevaluate them. I think it went really fast. I mean, we were thorough on the ones that we knew had a lot of problems and then we're like, okay, they seem like they're okay. You know, Dr. Nancy's seen all their pictures and you know, I've sent videos and all kinds of stuff to her. So, um, you know, it's, we love having Dr. Nancy here, but for not having Dr. Nancy here. I think we did a good job. I hope she's proud of us. Yeah. We, uh, we worked hard while she was gone. Definitely. Um, Keith is really, really tired today, um, over, overloaded with his workload. So he isn't coming in. We don't have a stable hand right now. We are going to get everyone out of the office and we're gonna go clean stalls for a bit. Angela's out there right now and... Uh, My forte. Yes, it's your forte, you've got this. Um, so head on out to the barn. I think you'll, hopefully nobody calls, but if not, you can see who called and just call them back. I turned into an office princess and my boots on. <laughs> well, we'll keep you out of the muck. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go tell the media team what we're doing now. So if I can have everyone's attention. Angela's out there cleaning stalls in the barn and it won't take very long if we all go out there and just get stalls cleaned really quick. So, you gonna get your hands a little dirty today. <laughs> You're so enthusiastic. I'm ready. Yes. I think Angela's really gonna appreciate it. It looks like, is Angela out there already? Yeah, she's cleaning. Wow. Angela's gonna really appreciate the help, I can tell. So, horses are very messy, and they can take a beautiful stall to a very rough looking stall overnight. And that's what happens every day here. Um, so yeah, these stalls need to get uh, cleaned up and uh, we, can, we can all do it together quickly, I think. How's it going, Chrissy? I'm getting it done. Yeah. We're all working together. I like your shoes. Thank you. I didn't dress to clean the barn, but that's okay. I'll bring my boots next time. This is? this is Benjamin's stall. He gets air conditioning, and I am lucky enough to work in the air conditioning until I step out the door. Looks good, you guys, working hard. <laughs>
<laughs> That's so nice. I thought it wasn't done, and now Tony did it. It's done. Wow. <laughs> Up to where it's just one or two cars and the rest of you guys can go back to your work. Just check in with Angela and make sure there's no other stalls that need to be swept out. Come on, Benjamin. Come on, buddy. It's like I'm starving. He looks so much better than he did when we got him. Here you go, buddy. Nice clean stall. That was amazing. It would have taken me hours to do all this hard work that they did in about 30 minutes. Awesome. Well, it's all wrapped up. All the jobs are done. We're just putting uh, shavings in here for Firefly and um, we'll be done. So many hands definitely made light work today. If you would like to join our team as a stable hand, send in your resume. Uh, we want to know that you can handle horses, and that you don't mind hard physical labor. I just literally cannot believe somebody doesn't want to do this full time for us. Like, you get good cardio exercise every day, you sweat the toxins out of your body, you look good on camera, and people, like, they will message us and tell us how awesome you are for keeping the horses happy, so. We all got it done, we got a great team here, and um, if you'd like to join the team, send in a resume for a stable hand position. 100%, it's you, a good job. You have to be a stable person, though. We want reliability and stableness, and you'd fit right in.